Hi everyone welcome back this is Deborah and today I'm going to be making a folder to put some excess photographs in. So I've got lots of these photos which were from a trip that we did back in 2006 to New York and this one's Boston and you know various other places up in New England and I want to get a folder made so that I can put them in it because Maybe you don't want to scrapbook all your photos, but you still want to keep them so you can just go through and you can flick through and have a look at the things that you saw and that. And they might not be, you know, the very best photos. Maybe, you know, in this instance, I've probably scrapbooked a lot of these photos. I think I took about 4,000 on this trip and I had them all printed too. So I had a lot of photos, but you know, I used to do a lot of scrapbooking. So I thought maybe a little folder might be good and then this is sort of something I could then put this folder into my travel journal, into a pocket or at the back of my travel journal. So that's the plan, is something to put a wad of photos in. So to that end I have cut a piece of manila cardstock. As you know I use it as my base a lot and if you're wanting the measurements I've cut mine six and a half by six inches this way and then I scored it at an inch and a half for the back piece here and then what I did with the front piece is I just came in and I cut it off so you can see that it's probably about an eighth of an inch or a bit more underneath that fold so I just put it in the cutter and I just marked where I wanted to cut it and I cut it off so I could create this little flap and I thought well that's pretty good I can pop the photos in there and then my brain went, well, what's going to happen to them? Are they going to slide out the side? So I've turned this in from just making a, a simple folder that folds up into a folder that's going to have some concertina sides, I hope. I've never made this before, so we'll see what happens when I get going. So my first step is I've got two more pieces of manila cardstock and I'm just going to pop them in just so they sit at the bottom and then I will mark this here and then this one will be the same now they should be the same height but I'll just mark them both just to be doubly sure and I'll probably cut them a wee bit shorter than that actually I think that might be a tiny little bit too big it would be better if they didn't come right to the edge so I'm just using my trimmer to trim them and if they are slightly different sizes, that's really not the end of the world. At least that's what I'm planning in my head. Now I have to apologise for not making a video the other day. I know a couple of people have been in touch and said, no video, what's going on? Checking if I was all right, which was very nice of them. And yes, I was all right and I am all right. I just got tied up and things happened that day and I just never got time to sit down at the craft table and make something which is rare I think that's the first one that I've ever missed in putting them out as I do you know so I've cut this and it's around about three inches wide they both are and I thought if I concertina it just at the half inch mark so I'll just put some score lines down on the half inch mark so if I just now fold the concertinas back and forth like that and then I've got this and I'm hoping that I can put this in here so it's like one of those file folders you buy from Officeworks it may have just been easier to cut one of those apart but you know I do like a challenge so I, that's why I thought I'd do it this way I think that is going to work but now I've realized that I actually want to cover it and that's going to be hard to cover and fold so my thought is that I'll just repeat that process with some cardstock and maybe that will sort it out rather than using the, um, the manila folder so I'll keep these because I might use them later but at least now I know what size I need I'm just going to repeat that in this um, cardstock now and then I will continue on. Okay so I've made those again just in some Tim Holtz cardstock and I've concertinaed them up so they're all ready to go but for the base piece I need to put something on here first and again I don't have to use a piece of manila cardstock underneath. I could make this just from 
the Tim Holtz cardstock because it is quite thick but I thought that it might be good to use a base because that way I will have a nice sturdy product at the end of the day and also I've got all these little scraps that I want to use up I've got things like this I think these were from cutting things up the other day so I need to kind of try and use all these little bits and bobs up this is a good way to do them is just to you know use them as collage pieces on top so we'll get going and I'll do some of that because I want to use these in a collagey way I'm actually going to chop some of the paper up a bit smaller so I do have some reasonable sized pieces here and I thought instead of just using it in a big block like this why not cut it up a bit and that way I can also top and tail it and you know use one side and then the other so that I'm not always using the one side of the cardstock so let's get going now I need to do both the back and the front so maybe on the inside I will just do a piece of standard paper let's see if I can find one here in my box of tricks I have this piece of paper which is not quite the width that I need it to put on here it's about a half an inch short but what I'm going to do is I'm still going to use it because I want to use up some of these bits I've got chopped and then I'm going to put some washi in this fold here and that will hide that um, piece then I won't have to have one that's all the right width because if I do that it will also mean it'll be easier for the folder to actually fold I won't have three layers of paper in that fold internal fold and you'll see what I mean when I do this then with this one I'm going to use the other piece and then I'm going to get a little piece like this bit here and put it down the side so I've kind of used both pieces they'll fit perfectly like that in there and then the plan is to run the washi which is going to hide all the edges and also it's not going to cover up that fold and you will notice also that I have the um, this one up this way and this one up this way because they'll sit up like that so when you're looking down at them they should be up the same way or at least in the right order for me now I'm going to leave that maybe a quarter of no maybe an eighth of an inch shy of that fold again just so I can make sure that it's not going to interfere and then along the bottom I'm going to put some glue down to help hold this washi in place and then the washi kind of like a brownie colored washi it's about the only one I have in a large width that is anywhere close to matching so maybe it's not quite right but it's all I've got so I'm, you know need to use what you've got now when I fold this at the fold nothing's interfering with it I don't have a lot of heavy paper in that fold there getting in the way and I need to put something up here as well so again I might put a piece of washi here too because that's on the fold as well and it's important for me that I don't put any thick paper on the inside folding piece Now on the outside I'm going to use that method of doing the collage work so I'm just going to use some paper and then I'm going to get some other things and put on top of it as well and then before continuing on on the other side I am going to ink this so that I get right here on that line so that I don't have to put that paper over the fold and also on the bottom because once it's brown you're probably not going to be able to see it and it's much easier to do that at this point than it is to do it once the paper's on sometimes I find it tricky to get in there if the paper's on the edge of that um, paper on the edge of the fold there so I've done that now so that it's kind of hidden that up and while I'm here I may as well do these edges as well and when I put this on I'm going to make sure that it's on the edge of the paper so that when it folds open and they'll never open this far again but I don't want it butting up against the pieces of paper on the other side now I've got that all collaged up I'm going to take some of these bits and put on top so I've just got little bits like this and I thought if I pop them 
around so this is some of the stuff I used the other day but see if I put that there you don't know that it's already a piece that I'd cut from you know when I was mucking around the other day making something I can't remember what but I know I was making something I think I finally made a decision about where I want these and this one's going to tuck under there so while that's still wet I better put it under so I can still tuck it before that glue dries just push it under there and then I'm going to put this one which is the maze on the other side but down here Again, do that before the glue dries. You'll just see it through the hole that's in the ticket, but that's okay. Actually, I want it up a bit further. I want it covering that join there. So I want to say opposite like that. And then I thought maybe this one across here, the tag. Seems like it's a good thing to do. Okay, let's do it. Okay, and then, so that's kind of like the front part of it. And then I've got the top. Now on the top, I'm going to measure and put an eyelet. And that'll be my closure. I've got a piece of sort of ribbon out, but I don't know if that's going to be, and probably it's too thick to get through the eyelet hole, but never mind. I'll find something else. Now, I don't have a corner rounder that was going to fit and cut all that. I know you can get them. I could get a, what's it called, a chomp. It's the same family as the crocodile. Um, we are memory keepers, I think. And I don't have one, but I have a 10 cent piece, which I'll just put here and draw a curve so I can cut. And same on the other side. I thought I wanted the corners rounded on this just at the top and that's probably the easiest way to get a, a curve that looks quite good with a 10 cent piece or a 5 cent piece just 10 is what I happen to pick up and then on so I've got my bits on the front and then on the back I don't know if I want to add anything let me see what I could add I could put something rather big like that I could just put something like this. I think that goes quite well because I've got the typewriter thing on there. I quite like that this kind of fits in like that already looks like it's something that I've added. I don't know if that's a bit big. I could do a ticket, another ticket. And then I could do another little ticket like up here, like that. That might be enough, I think. I don't think I need to put anything there because I've got that. Or alternatively, I could put that ticket down here. Um, which one do I like? I actually want a bit more a pattern on here, so I think I'm going to put it here like this. Okay. Oh, now very exciting news to share. Very exciting, forgot about this. On Saturday, we're going to have a look at a bus. So just not to buy, just to see what it feels like to be in a little bus that's turned into a coaster. Uh, sorry, a Toyota coaster that's turned into a camper or a, you know, like a van where we can sleep and eat and etc. So yes, I've arranged to go and see one on Saturday. So super, super exciting and I shall let you know next week what I thought of it. We might hate it. That's what's worrying me right at the moment, that we might get home and go, oh, that was horrible. We don't want to live in a bus even for a weekend or a week. Okay, so that's that bit there. And yeah, the piece of ribbon I've got out is not going to fit through that. I can tell that right now. And then the sides need to go in. So they will go along here. So I'll start by putting the inside ones down and you need to squish them down fold this over and just give it a test yeah see it's going to create a tiny little bit of room in there 
All right, I think I can stick them on. I don't know whether I need to cut them. I think I do. I think I should have done that before I stuck them down, but they're not dry yet, so I'm just going to angle that. I don't know why I wouldn't have done that, because I do that with all my things, just to make sure that the angle, you know, the bunching isn't happening right down there in the folds. I don't need to do that on the top, because I've not got a corner or a fold that's coming up. Now if you're in the US or elsewhere, you don't know what a Toyota Coaster is. It's actually like a mini bus. It's like a shuttle bus. So 25 seats. It's a thing that, you know, usually if you come from an airport in a little bus somewhere, they'll put you in a little, little mini bus. So it's not huge. And it's the one that I think that I want right now. It's seven meters nose to tail. So it's not going to be a lot of living space, but I think it'll be enough for the two of us. And yes, I will be having a bathroom and also beds and a washing machine. It's the advice given to me by some of you and other people is that you need a washing machine. So definitely need one. I'm going to forego the dishwasher. I seriously thought about getting a dishwasher. I actually like that tag on the front because I can write something on there. That was accidental on purpose. No, it was that complete and utter serendipity. I didn't even know I was doing that. And this, I think, would also be quite a good little gift for somebody. You know, somebody who maybe doesn't like photo albums or doesn't have the space to put photo albums. You could do this up and then you could give that to them and then they could just, you know, have a certain select number of photographs. Maybe for a little brag book, carrying your handbag. I'll just get something to finish it off though so that I can complete it. So this is quite a thick black cord. I just, I have a few pieces on here. If I don't quite use a bit or I've cut it a bit long or short, I just thread it back through the centre of the reel. So I've got a couple of bits on there, but now I've got it. And it's like super cheap. You can see, I buy it in bulk. You know, I might buy... Um, you know 10 or 20 meters at the one time and then I just had a spool actually I think they gave me the spool that it came off so that I could or a little spool that they had so I can just store it like that and it stores like that really well actually so if I put this through here I need something that's going to pull that lip down and then enough so that it can then go around and then maybe sort of fold in there. So probably that, that looks good. Don't know how long it is. I've just measured it by eye. And if I do a little knot in the end like this, if I then put this in, I could possibly put it under here like this. I'm sure that there would be other ways to do it, but I mean, you get the idea. It depends what you want to do really. And I could just tie it up like that quite loosely. So that is my little photo folder. I hope you like that and you've learned a couple of new things or I've given you some ideas to um, get you inspired and you can get working on your own things. And that is it for today. Thanks for joining me. This is Deborah. Cheers.